Okay, so the main topic of the night here is running your own mail server here. And uh, first, of course, my uh, rough intro is that I like Linux. I've been doing it for a while. And uh, I'm a Google uh, uh, Groups email uh, uh, refugee. And uh, yeah, we'll get into that here in a minute. But uh, yeah, that's a little bit about me. Uh, so what basically brought about this whole talk is that uh, G Suite uh, had an old grandfathered free edition that would uh, that a bunch of us old timers still were using because uh, Google's anti-spam stuff is second to none, partially because they're rather draconian and just will eat all your spam and uh, yeah. The, when you're the, the big guy, you, you can get away with stuff. So uh, they were getting rid of that and we're going to make people pay per email account. And there were a bunch of people that uh, made email addresses for their cats and their dogs and children and friends and et cetera. So th that was going to be kind of cost prohibitive. So they must have been listening to me over my uh, uh, Google device, though. And uh, yesterday announced that for the non-business uh, uh, users, uh, they they relented and uh, now will let you uh, go to a sort of legacy sunset mode that will just keep working. So hooray, we won. My, my topic is now less useful, but we'll boldly go forward because I, I spent a uh, uh, bunch of time here getting this uh, ready. So yay. So now you may ask, why, why do I want to run my uh, own mail server? Let's go for the good parts first. I mean, if you own your own server, you're, you don't have Google figuring out how they're going to serve up your uh, advertisements to you, reading your email to try and figure out, et cetera. If you get served with a warrant, uh, you know that someone's wanting to watch your email because you're, you're the admin. Uh, you also have a lot of control. You're not exactly the, the big attack juicy target because if someone beats Google and gets in there and reads email, well, they they just got the, the keys to the kingdom. So like, for example, nation states kind of like to uh, figure out how to get in there. Uh, you also can see your own logs. I know there's been a few times with the uh, log mailing list that people say, hey, I, I'm not getting the emails. I know you guys are sending them, but I, I just aren't getting them. Well, if you can see your logs, you can see what's happening and that there's some sort of anti-spam problem or what have you, where otherwise it's just disappearing into the void and we still have no idea what happened to you, the emails. I'm assuming you get them sometimes. Yeah, I think you, I think I fixed it by resubscribing at one point, but there was like no awesome. Yeah, there was no rhyme or reason to why it dropped you in the first place. So anyway, though, it's great. Uh, and then also, you don't have to worry about uh, the, the uh, person down the street who's also using your email server. Uh, who uh, decided they were going to send out uh, racist hate mail to 5,000 of their best friends and now got mail server uh, uh, blackballed for being a uh, spam uh, site. So th there, of course, are major downsides to it. You better grab a bottle of Rolaid because uh, you're, you're going to have some heartburn uh, running your own mail server. Security is hard. Keeping things up to date is hard. Automated, otherwise, uh, yeah, it's tough. You're also going to have to jump through a continuing arms race of anti-spam uh, hoops, IP address, blacklist, uh, worrying about uh, if you're using, like, say, uh, a uh, web hosting company to run your uh, uh, virtual machine and uh, 
enough uh, people decide to use it because it's cheap and the entire IP block gets uh, blocked, well, then you're, you're in trouble. You've got the whole residential IP address issue where uh, your local ISP is blocking port 25, so you can't send outbound mail. I mean, they, you're going to have to jump through a bunch of hoops, and that's not even getting into the DNS stuff, which we'll get into in a minute here. Uh, it's hard to beat uh, Gmail, uh, Yahoo Mail, all of those guys cost of free. It, it really is, but the, the old adage of when uh, the product is free, you are uh, what's being sold. And also just keeping things up to date again, see security there. And also there's a lot of spam out there and you're constantly going to be tweaking and tuning things and your anti-spam filters probably aren't going to be as good as the big guys. But that being said, why not? They, you can just go through the, the trouble of installing all the different parts and bits. Uh, I believe Harrison uh, had shared out last month the uh, URL of basically how to do what iRedMail does uh, by hand. And I mean, other than the fact that it will take you quite a while to get it all set up and tuning everything is kind of annoying. Uh, the, the good news is if you go to iRedMail, uh, the, it, it's nice and easy. Uh, I've got the link in uh, the, the meeting notes here, uh, and we'll, we'll go there in just a minute here. But first, before we set up things, let, let's just quick go through the life and uh, what email works. So as a third party out in the world, I have an email I want to send to uh, uh, Alice here. And uh, so I send my email out here to my uh, mail server. It connects up and uh, connects to uh, Alice's email server. Uh, here, SMTP, uh, th think of it as Postfix, is uh, the big one that a lot of people use. It writes it to disk. Then Alice's uh, email client uh, picks up and connects via uh, either POP3, which basically just collects the, the message from the mailbox and stores it locally, or IMAP. Uh, stores locally on your, your uh, still on the server. So, for example, like say if I have email on my phone, my laptop, my desktop, and the web browser, well, I can see all the email if I use IMAP. Uh, and they basically, they, this whole setup is how uh, your, your email uh, lifecycle is. Now, say I decide I want to send an email out to the person who just replied to them. Basically, my uh, email client connects via SMTP to my outgoing mail server, and it follows the, the path back around and does the whole, I guess you can't see me making motions here. Uh, the, so uh, my, my if I send via the webmail, it sends it back via SMTP, and then out, and then does the whole thing over again. Seems simple, right? A couple uh, daemons and nothing too much uh, hard burn here. Real easy, simple. You could uh, connect via Telnet to port 25 and send your emails. It's just all text. Simple, right? Well, it, it is if it was 1994. Unfortunately, spam. Spam and viruses and phishing and all of those things, people just can't let alone and be nice. So we have tools that we need to uh, fight here. Uh, let's see. Oh, never mind. Uh, so th there's some nice tools that are built into uh, the, the IRED mail uh, script which basically all it does is just install all the servers and configures it all for you. And it's easy button here. So this uh, APD uh, basically is uh, what handles the gray listing, black listing, white listing. Um, if you prefer, um, 
Not sure what term you'd use for gray listing, uh, block or uh, uh, disallow listing and allow listing, uh, if you feel that way. Uh, uh, it also uses uh, Spam Assassin to uh, take a look and see, does your email look like spam? Is it on any of the, the uh, uh, block lists or stuff like that? Uh, it will cover those in a minute. It also runs a, a quick little copy of the antivirus on it, just to make sure that there aren't any nice little uh, treats along the side. So, to sort of maybe make that nice simple little uh, path uh, make a little more sense here, so that incoming email comes in on uh, port 25, Postfix takes a look and says, okay, is this an allowed uh, message? Is it trying to be relayed? Because back in the, the good old days of the heyday of uh, TCP uh, and the internet, you, you could uh, connect up to your local uh, email server and say, hey, I don't know you and you don't know me, but would you pass this email on to your friend? Unfortunately, uh, that, that sort of got abused an awful lot. So yeah, there, there still are times that that's allowed. Uh, also, the idea of gray listing is most spammers uh, just are doing drive-by attacks where they'll fire off an email. And you know what? They, if it hits, it hits. If it doesn't, well, they've already moved on to hit the next 5 million people that they're trying to send you. So one of the tricks that mail servers have gone to doing is the first time they get an email, they'll say, nope, come back later. And uh, which is perfectly allowed. In fact, in the, the battle days, most email servers weren't online all the time. So they, there's an idea that it will try again later if it's actually real. It also will check and see is uh, the DNS, uh, all of the DNS stuff okay. And if so, then it passes it on to uh, the uh, AMVIS, a male virus scanner. Awesome acronym there. And it hits uh, spam assassin to see if it looks like spam, clam AB to see if it has any viruses. And if it's okay, it will respond back saying, yep. Next, postfix checks to see, okay, uh, info at dinner.com. Okay, that, that's actually an alias that hits uh, my email, my wife's email, and uh, my dog's email. And then at that point, it passes it on to the uh, mail server where it, it's stored in your var or vmail directory and make sure to make sure that you're not uh, using too much uh, email space, all sorts of stuff like that. And then me as a user here at the end can connect up to Dubcot and download my email. So as you can see, the world got a lot more complicated. In fact, if you really want to try and uh, follow out the, uh, the full path here, as you can see, it's pretty complicated. But it's still fairly easy to read the, the state machine here. But much like uh, uh, business org charts, they, there's a whole lot of uh, lines and shared responsibilities here. Likewise, for outbound mail, I want to send something. It goes to postfix. It says, okay, can, can this person send it? Yes. Okay. Are they violating any sort of thing like uh, trying to send too many messages at once? Uh, is it doesn't have spam in it? Is it trying to send to a mailing list? Okay, let's expand that out, et cetera. And then eventually it leaves, it, it passes, and you're being a good uh, citizen, basically. So thankfully, they go through the trouble of setting all that up for you because ain't nobody got time for that. Someone does. Yes, but they, they're a lot smarter than I am. So the, the good news is if you go to their website, I'll, I'll link it out here. They, they've got a couple different options here. Of course, they, they want to uh, sell you. you. You'll see where they, they'll talk about the I read mail easy, or there's like a, a super 
like admin uh, version of it that they they charge you for, or there's a free version. Stable, you'll just download a script and run it, and it will either do apt or uh, yum or etc. to set everybody up. Deploy from web is where they're trying to sell it to you for running in like a uh, hosted sort of way, or you can just download a Docker version. Beta, not production ready. I don't know, it worked pretty good for me, uh, but it still may mug you and steal your lunch money. So yeah, backups are important. But as you can see, it hits all the, the main OSs here. And really, all of this is designed to run uh, on a dedicated machine, which is why I absolutely love the idea of Docker, because, of course, we have to containerize all the things. Uh, and also, that way, I didn't have to come up with a clean machine to install stuff on. So if we take a look at that Docker uh, image there, they have a really nice uh, warning saying that it's not always stable. That's why I'm using the stable version of their not stable software. <laughs> but they do have a nice little, <coughs> here's how you set up the, the Docker environment, which if we go here, we can zoom in on that a little bit. And basically what you're ending up doing here, we'll do it here in just a minute, but you can uh, you just make, a, make the directory that you wanna have all of your persistent stuff that actually matters and is not ephemeral in. And then you just have to echo a few things into this comp file. So like, what is your host name? What is your domain? What is your first admin password? As you can see here, it's really super secret. What is some of the uh, API uh, tokens and stuff like that? And then you have to create up uh, a bunch of data files here, which fun thing, I, I didn't actually realize that you could do this where basically it will create up a backup MySQL, MAV, custom, blah, 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 all those folders inside of data just by putting the curly Q brackets there. This, if anything, would save me so much time in running copy and paste so many times. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, shell expansion. Yeah, with shell expansion, I forgot it existed. It shows how often I, I actually am doing yeah. that stuff. <laughs> so, yeah, cool. If anything, this is the thing I learned from this presentation. So, then to run it, uh, it will, we'll be actually running this here in a minute, but uh, the, the big call outs here is since I am uh, port forwarding a few uh, ports here that are low number, uh, I had to run sudo even though Cloudband plays nice without uh, sudo in most cases. Those are protected ports. Anything below, uh, what is it like? 1024. Uh, 1024. Which I want to say a thousand, but anyway, anything that's a low number port is protected and you have to be blessed in order to do it. So that's why we're pseudoing. And the, the big ones that actually matter that we, we care about would be, I mean, port 80, you, you could always move to somewhere else, port 40, et cetera. The uh, common numbers, like I believe that's uh, pop three. Uh, the, so there's a bunch of these, port 25 is another really important one because everyone else on the internet expects that your mail server is going to be listening for inbound mail at port 25. And if it isn't, well, they're never going to actually be able to contact you. So yeah, uh, and then we're basically just uh, volume mounting in all of these different uh, data ephemeral things on top of the ephemeral image. And we're just grabbing IREB mail MariaDB stable. Because the other one, basically anytime anyone checks anything into the unstable branch, it compiles and releases itself. And yeah, there may be demons there. Uh, other big things that will be I'll be demonstrating here is uh, from another uh, 
terminal, if you run uh, Podman PS, you can actually get what is the uh, container's name. And then you can execute an interactive terminal into it in order to run some of the admin uh, stuff. And a lot of the really beneficial ones are in uh, IRED APD tools. And uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and uh, switch over to a terminal here in Andrew? order to, yes. Uh, there was a comment in chat from uh, Lee about, uh, does Podman require sudo? So Podman itself will run rootless. So it doesn't require sudo. Uh, but if you are running it in like how Docker would normally perform, where root is needed, so uh, you can run Podman just fine, but the moment you try and do something uh, that's protected here, for example, here, let, let's just go ahead and uh, try, I'm going to go ahead and let's kill the, the existing terminal here. So I'm ending my, my version of uh, IRED mill that was running here. And let's just see what happens if we try running it without sudo. Unfortunately, it takes it a minute to die. And of course, it always takes longer when you're presenting. This is what I get for not killing it earlier. But as you can see, this is a bat container with a lot of stuff running. Not, not really the most ideal way of running things. In theory, you have multiple ones running. With, so you theoretically could. The, the big problem is uh, this is running locally on this laptop. So only the people in the, this room probably could get away with sending me an email. Uh, so let's just go ahead and get rid of the pseudo here. But remember how I said we have all these little ports? It is not going to like it. Is this in WSL? Yes. <laughs> I love it. So here we go. We got a bunch of errors saying that you can't add unprivileged ports to 24. Uh, so it has to be uh, below or above 1024. So bind uh, failed. So then that's why we need sudo because uh, otherwise uh, it won't let us do those things. And we could get, get around most of them except for port 25. So let's just go ahead and spin that up here. And what did I do to get to this point? Uh, if you remember from the, the Docker uh, documentation, uh, if I move my mouse around the right way here, uh, this is the stack of commands that I ran here, basically just uh, a directory. I'm, so let, let's just go ahead and start from scratch here. So we're going to go ahead and create a bunch of files here and then echo some stuff into it here. Uh, you'll want to, of course, change your super secret password and set your uh, host name to whatever you, you're wanting there. And let's just go ahead and redo all this from scratch. So let's go ahead and cancel. So let's go CD. Demo two. Okay, let's just look through the miracle of copying and pasting here. So if we take a look at what's going on here, here we've got this uh, comp and data. And since if we just scroll up here, uh, since we're doing this uh, PWD of data and all of these uh, folders that we created up, we'll be starting from scratch here. So we go ahead and type in your root password or your pseudo password, I guess it would be. And so as you can see, it's initializing stuff on, from scratch because we don't have any of these things in there. 
And so it's downloading and uh, generating uh, RSA keys. Of course, since this is a laptop that's also doing uh, screen sharing as well as PowerPoint, as well as running Windows, as well as running Linux, as you can see, it goes really fast. What kind of laptop? Uh, it is an i7 with, I want to say, 32 gigs of RAM. So, I mean, it's no slouch, but it is still a few. Uh, oh, it's a ThinkPad. Lenovo T what? Uh, T four seventy. Okay. So I mean, it, it's an older model. Uh, technically, you had to hack your way around to get Windows eleven on it, but I wanted to get some experience with it before having to deal with it in the real world. So yeah. So anyway, though, generating uh, certificates sucks. But if it was easy. Uh, it wouldn't be all that hard to make a whole bunch of them and then hack your way through it. So anyway, though, as you can see, this is the, the most painful part. Looking here at the comments. Uh, yes, uh, so Stephen, the, the naming schema is uh, uh, Star Trek based. So uh, this is uh, um, so like the security. Uh, my my firewall's name is Orf, and uh, uh, there for a while I had a dual booting machine that was uh, hard and Locutus, depending on which OS it was in. And so yes, lot, lots of fun uh, jokes there. Uh, so as you can see here, now we are downloading uh, the latest uh, antivirus uh, definitions here. And that's the one thing to get an updated version of uh, your antivirus stuff, just cycle the container and it will update itself automatically. So like once a day, you can schedule the, the container to die and restart and it'll just be great. So as you can see, this, of course, went faster when it wasn't doing a whole bunch of other stuff on my machine as well. So we've created and started up a whole bunch of services. Yeah, you get what you pay for. But does, this, it does. Uh, does your particular uh, email server play nice with like, uh, you know, uh, high availability kind of you know, living in a cluster and maybe having, you know, two or three friends that are also like load balancing and that kind of thing. So you could have like uh, automatic failover. So like, you know, you just kill one and wait for the next one to come up and then you kill the second one and you wait for that to come up, you kill the third one. And then, you know, then you could have zero downtime. So, so not by default, but since a lot of the backing is using uh, uh, just to, MySQL, uh, you, you could do high availability by rolling your own containerization. I, but, I wonder if there's a there's a already like a Helm chart or something for this that would have that built in or something like that. Yeah, at least there's not an official one on their website, but it wouldn't surprise me. But okay, so we actually have things running here. So let's go ahead and well, well we have. The, this running here, we're, we're just going to pop in here to another window. And let's just see what its name is here. And uh, again, we're having to do sudo because uh, Podman that, that's running in rootless mode will only look at your local, your user Podmans. So here, we, we can take a look here and see. Okay, so we, we've got this. Uh, container ID, so we'll want that. But if we just take a look here, just to answer uh, the question, I know Lee will be asking. If we ask, okay, what podmans are running as my user? Or none, because it's running as root instead. So let's go ahead and just connect in here. So 
just to go over the, the commands here. I do not want to paste that. I so want... you did sudo su and then did uh, podman ps, would be able to, would, would be able, us be able to see things? Um, you know what? The, the answer is yes, but let's just go ahead and do it. Okay. Yep, there you go. Oh, you already did pseudo podman ps. I'm sorry, I missed that part. And there was stuff yep. there. So sorry about that. So yeah, no, no problem. Uh, you could also do pseudo bash and have the same result. Uh, but anyway, all sorts of fun ways to get through. Uh, those are completely unrelated to what we actually want to do here, which is we want to run uh, Podman ex execute interactive terminal, that container ID, and let's just run bash. So here we are inside of the mail server. So if we run PS, There you can see we've got a dove cot, which is your, your POP3 and SMPP, or uh, uh, POP3 and IMAP server. You've got a bunch of other stuff all running here, including PHP and Nginx. And as I said, this is a really big container. So uh, we're in there. Let's just go ahead and connect uh, locally here. Red admin in. Let me get my mouse over here. Rank and share. Come on. Okay, there we go. So by default, their admin page, of course, it's going to warn that my uh, certificate's invalid. We, we can fix that if we had a real domain hooked up here. Instead, let's just boldly go forward into localhost. And so the uh, admin is, so your first account that ends up getting set is postmaster at your domain. And then if you remember my, my super secret password that I set there is my secret password. So secure. So if someone actually did know my IP address, uh, they, they, they'd totally be able to get in and create a bunch of accounts here. But by default, the free version, of course, they give you a nice little advertisement that you can upgrade to IRID Admin Pro. And if you wanted to pay that, you're more than welcome to. It ends up costing you. How much is it going to cost? Uh, by now, okay, fine. A lot of money for what we're doing. And as you can see, we can actually get away with most of what they're, they're offering just by going to uh, the command line. But uh, where this is useful is you can pop in and add additional domain names as well as add users. So let's say if I wanted to create my user, let's just call him Andy password, password, password. And let's give me hundred megabytes of uh, quarter space. Uh, apparently it wants, it's kind of a little bit cranky about that. So let's go Andy, capital password one exclamation mark. Awesome password. One exclamation mark. And now let's just say 100. 
and then hit add. Okay, so now I've created a user. Let's just go ahead and go to local host here. And here we are in red mail. So let's go Andy at dinner.co.co and password one exclamation mark. And I mean, if anyone's seen uh, Roundcube webmail, I mean, it, it's fairly simple, fairly standard, easy, nice to do here. So you can say, okay, compose a message. And of course, unfortunately, right now we can't send messages out because of the fact that I'm sure, I really hope their ISP here that we're at is blocked 425. And if they haven't, I'm really amazed. So, but we could send to Postmaster here. If I move my mouse here, uh, and test and test and then send. Oops, we can get part twenty-five out. Oh, yeah, I guess port 25 would, would work just fine. Uh, you, you'd have to have some port or global uh, mail server that would actually accept a uh, yeah. uh, message. So yeah, let, let's just try sending one here. Uh, let's go. I sent it to mail now. What's that? If well, I can you specify a mail server? Uh, so you can, yes. That, that's uh, the next thing I'm going to show here. So if you specify mail dev as your relay server, you have a shot. You have a shot at actually send mail because they're pretty open. But specify who? Mail dev? Oh. Well, yeah, you'd have to have a user name or password though to uh, uh, tie in with it. Maybe. I mean, I mean, that's what I'm thinking. If you specify them as a the reader, they might. Because they're pretty, pretty open in that regard. But yeah, we just try and send out two that's not going to go with our. Yeah. So here if we go try dinner at dot com. And let's just say, let's see if this even works and gets into my spam box. Okay, so we've sent some mail here. Uh, let's just go ahead and quick take a look here. Local host. Oh, great, it has. Okay, so let, let's try logging out. Uh, go for. Uh, uh, what was it? Postmaster Dem. And then the, the password was. Sorry, here my uh, screen is currently set backwards to what I'd expect. Uh, so my secret password was my password. So coming over here, we go copy and paste to sign in. And as we look here, you see we've got an email from me. And if we take a look at the details here, all headers, you can see that it passed because it. Uh, <laughs> That's awesome. So yeah, anyway, uh, so there's some fun stuff here that we'll unpack here in a minute of the signatures and uh, the, the fact that it's been uh, antivirus scanned. And as you can see, the, the path that it took was it re was received by a local host and then bounced its way around itself here, now getting antivirus scanned and all those things. 
So yeah, th there's some fun stuff here that we, we probably should tweak and fix. But uh, the reason passed, it was generated. It just assumed good. Uh, so anyway, the, the other nice thing that they do uh, is they will send you an email with, uh, hey, they, this will send a, a tip saying, you, you just uh, created me. Here's how you can log into my me. Of course, the big problem is uh, the uh, webmail and admin stuff. Well, unless you're logging in, uh, to the email telling you how to log into your email really isn't going to be all that helpful. But yeah, uh, so it does give you how to set up SMTP as well as IMAP and POP3, as well as where the database is backed up, where the certs are, all those sort of things, and how everything was configured. So kind of helpful, nice to see where everything's at and how the, the world works. And did you change your password from the interface? What did you say? Oh, sorry, sorry Eric, what, what was that? Can you change your user password from the web interface? Uh, yes, I, so let, let's see here. I, I haven't tried it in web. Uh, did I think uh, responses identities out of password? So my super secret password, let's try my super secret password one. Super secret password one. Yes, yes you can. So as a end user, I can totally do that. Does this support security key to FA? This is round cute webmail. It, it barely supports a password. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'm sure there are other webmails out there that, that would, but yeah, not this one, sorry. Uh, so anyway, though, uh, so yeah, we've taken a look at red mail. Or, uh, here, let's go localhost slash I read admin. Yeah, I think the, those are the, the good spots here that we can take a look at. Uh, let's. If you like 1991, you can get squirrel mail. Uh, yeah, squirrel mail is definitely a good one. Uh, so uh, the uh, I read APD tools. Let's take a look at him quick. And let's just quick go here to CD opt. And I read APD. Let's go. Tools. And this is where you can tweak your uh, gray listing and all these other uh, configs here. So if you go gray listing admin, and we just run it, as you can see here, it will say, hey, there, this is all the stuff you can do. So let's just go ahead and list, because that's a great one. And as you can see right now, it is gray listing everyone for everything. So by default, everything gets gray listed. Uh, other things that we can do is center score it. So if you have a, uh, so you're, you're going to be sending out a bunch of corporate email and you know that it's going to look scammy because it's corporate. Uh, you, you can go ahead and uh, allow this to the uh, machine that's going to be doing all the sending so it won't get uh, flagged as spam. Uh, it's also great if you're going to do uh, fish testing uh, against all your employees 
because hopefully the fish filter will uh, catch it and get rid of it. So yeah, uh, this is how you can tweak some of these uh, sort of things here. Uh, let's see, other things that you, you may care about, CD, uh, ETC, uh, Spam Assassin, uh, oops, I'll spy CD to it here. This is where you can configure uh, all of your filters. So like say, cat uh, the three, here's where you're loading all your filters and all those sort of things. Uh, uh, if we go to, uh, oh, what is it? It's, uh, sorry, here, give me one second just to check back at my notes. ETC, uh, you want to do. Uh, the post fix. So if we CD back one to post fix, and of course, uh, then is it installed? But if we go apt update. As the fan kicks into high on my machine here, yeah. Then, yes. Waiting for a second here as it installs. Okay, so now we can go Vim and let's do, uh, let's see here. And see, yeah. So here is where you can, let's make this a little bit bigger. And better color here. So this is where you can tweak all the different settings. Uh, so let's like say if it's an unknown local recipient, you can change that. Uh, parts that matter here, you can change where your uh, certificate uh, keys are. Uh, what happens if it's a, uh, a uh, blacklist option or uh, if it's on a bad IP address. This is also where you can add uh, lists of uh, IP addresses that should be uh, blocked. Uh, SpamHaas and Barracuda both run very big ones that are uh, very good at getting rid of the biggest of the riffraff. It's also really annoying if you get added to their list because they're kind of a pain to get off of. But this is where you can add additional RBLs. Uh, you can also tweak various different settings, as well as if we scroll down here a little bit more. Uh, this is where you can set up uh, like smart ports and things like that. So this is where you can add virtual aliases, what your host name is, and various proxies. And of course, the, the big uh, warning here is that 
uh, if you're using uh, their uh, admin stuff, don't modify this because it will get clobbered. But this is where you, you can uh, set up a relay to uh, relay your emails uh, if you have a, a paid uh, uh, mail server for your outbound messages, which is a good segue to get us into the rest of the, the talk here. Uh, let me just hit. Uh, so, and then of course we're on the wrong screen here. Uh, one second here. Display settings. Swap. Okay, here we go. So uh, the, the one big thing that you want to get right, otherwise spam filters will really get you, is that you'll want to set up the A record, as well as if you have IPv6, the, the AAA record of, like say for example, your mail server would be uh, mail at myurl.com. And uh, then you also want to set up a MX record uh, that points so it would be an MX record uh, to app, which is the, the root of the domain, unless you want to have uh, subdomain email addresses. So like foo at bar.mydomain.com. Uh, and then, uh, so uh, the, the other big uh, gotchas here are as anti-spam tools. They have, uh, you'll want to set the uh, reverse DNS of the server if possible, because places seem to care uh, if you have your uh, reverse DNS set up properly to be able to take your IP address of 1.2.3.4 and turn it back into the same name as your mail server. Because if you can't do that, that, that will get a lot of, some of the mail uh, servers out there will just kick you and say, no, you're, you're not real uh, because you're, you didn't spend enough money to get a good enough host that will let you do that. Some dynamic DNS providers actually manage that. Yeah. It's one of those things where if you're willing to go through the work, most spammers aren't. So that, that's one easy button to help get rid of you. Uh, there's also the center, the, the SPF records, that basically uh, will say what email servers are allowed to send your email. Uh, for example, this first one, it's just a at uh, text field that you, you add. So this is version one of the SPF. Only be able to send through things that I have an MX record for. Or you can set what IP address is or uh, mail server DNS, et cetera. And that is, uh, I'll have a uh, URL that you can go to in the notes here that will help you go through all the permutations of that record. And then also, if you want to set a uh, DMARC uh, DKIM record, and that, that basically is what uh, certificate your email server is going to be signing your uh, email with. Uh, and the best thing to note about both of these are you, if you're going to uh, set it up wrong, you're definitely going to get rejected. It's better to not set it up at all than to do it wrong. You will get rejected and then the, there will be cures because of course all these CNS things get cached for a certain lifetime. And if you do it wrong, then you have to change the settings and then wait <laughs> however long the, the time to live on your uh, DNS is, as well as whatever time your the other end decides to hold on to it above and beyond what your time to live is. And yeah, it's not fun. Uh, you can set up as well a record of an email address to send a uh, basically report of how you're doing. So like say as your emails hit uh, Google server, they'll respond back to you like once a day with, Here's a roll up of all, the, all your uh, problems or how well you did uh, with your, your domain. So they, they will narc back to you at your address and tell you how bad things are or if you have things wrong. Uh, one of the, the things you can do is set to soft fail. So it will fail, it will get logged, 
it would let you know. So that, that's a nice thing to have. But of course, if you're uh, running here on your little laptop and you need a way to send outbound mail, uh, there is a medium place. Uh, they, so uh, they, there is a, you, you're not paying quite for a full mail server and all that stuff because you're running it yourself. But if you want to send a few emails a, a week out, the, the good news is uh, there's a bunch of hosts out there that have uh, uh, sort of a, a intro taster plan that, that will either be free or very low cost for like dollars a month the sort of level. Uh, just Googling out there, smtp.com is one. You can use AWS uh, uh, SNS or one, one of the S's, uh, things like MailJet. Uh, uh, Jared, I know you just mentioned one as well. Mailgun. Mailgun's one, et cetera. And, yeah, yeah send, send grid. I mean, you can shake a stick and there's a bunch of them out there. And basically, all that we let you do is it will set up a relay. And so you can send messages like that if you're on like a spot with a dodgy, dodgy IP address, like say if you're using OBH or one of those hosts that are famous for being amazingly cheap and amazingly used by a lot of spammers. So everyone blocks like the entire IP net block. So that, that's one way around that. Costs a little bit of money, but it really is the easy button to get around some of those problems. Or like say if you're on your, your local uh, network and you have port 25 outbound blocked. Yeah, so, and Andrew, Andrew, quick comment. Stay yeah. away from smtp.com. We've been getting all kinds of crap from them. They're letting anybody use their service. Good to know. Uh, and uh, those uh, ones that I, I listed, I am I have no knowledge of how well they're doing or if they're good people or anything like that. I spent ones of seconds Googling uh, that. So good to know, Lee. Thank you. Uh, uh, and, and also, historically, I've used Gmail as a relay for a number of, of uh, servers out in the wild, but I think they're getting ready to chomp down on that because they want to use better authentication. Yep. It, it, that's part of the reason why I didn't list them because I know they, they are getting a little more uh, cranky about those things. But uh, the, the big call outs are, in, like Lee had mentioned, the low cost ones are a shared resource. And if, uh, say, Jared is using uh, smtp.com and is just spamming out uh, a whole bunch of junk, well, they're going to get blocked, and then your stuff is going to get blocked too. So if you, it's the, the noisy neighbor problem all over again. And uh, you also will want to uh, adjust those uh, uh, SPF records and all those things to allow for uh, their records. Any sort of uh, service you're using should, worth their salt, should have documentation on what you need to adjust it to. If you don't, well, you're clearly not paying them enough. Uh, and you should find someone else. And so it's real easy in that uh, postfix uh, main CF file, just look for where it says relay host. And uh, if you go to the, the website here in their documentation, they have some great documentation on how to configure it from iRedmail. And you just basically set up what your relay server is and what port you're sending to, and then add your username and password for it to this uh, postfix SSL uh, password. So in the, the uh, so like say if your relay server's DNS address was relay server, it'd be relay.server space username and password. So uh, fairly easy and just restart postfix and you're good to go then. And really the, the, I, I'm amazed I was able to stretch it out as long as I did because honestly, uh, it's that easy to get set up. I, I had the main server up and running, I mean, in like five minutes or less, no problem. And since it's uh, Docker, 
Uh, we can easily, when, when it's time to tear it down and get rid of it, it's just as easy of, yes, I want to quit. And then quick popping over. And once we uh, kill everything, since we're done with the, the demo here, it's just as simple as waiting for it to die and then just running the rm r uh, command to delete all the folders. And that, that was the end of my lab. So just that easy. Nice. Right. And uh, the, the I read uh, website here, let me quick. And of course, it's going to start uh, dying here. But if we go to I read mail. simple as searching for it and there is their website and documentation wise they, they have fairly good uh, documentation on uh, how to install it uh, ignore their easy because that it's really expensive but let's say for example if you want to just install the the Debian they, their directions are fairly clear and of course, the, the big key again is they expect it's a fresh system with uh, none of the edge cases on it. And then it's just as simple as setting uh, your FQDN, your fully qualified domain name, downloading a uh, rando package from the internet, and then running the install. And then it will just uh, run you through an N curses thing to set up all your stuff. And you can choose here's how I want to run things. I, I mean, it, it's fairly easy. This honestly, within about 15, 20 minutes, you'll you'll have a fully up and running uh, instance. And then the other nice thing that uh, wasn't installed by default uh, in the Docker was uh, if you want to have a full, more uh, well-rounded uh, webmail experience. So Go has uh, calendar, contacts, active sync, all those nice things. It also uh, costs a lot more RAM and is a lot less light of a, a package to run. And on my poor little laptop here, I didn't really want to abuse it uh, quite as badly as that. But it will also set you through and uh, walk you through how to set things up and what files you need to copy where and all those sort of things. So, I mean, their, their documentation is amazingly easy to follow, all things considered. And we'll even walk you through uh, things like how to enable uh, SMTP SSAL authentication or how to quarantine uh, emails sent to and from a certain user, uh, all sorts of fairly obscure email things that are somewhat uh, how to do auto learning of spam uh, with Dovecop server. Uh, all sorts of really fun, cool stuff that if you want to get into the weeds, you totally can. But yeah, so anyway, though, that, that was uh, the uh, topic of the night here. And I'll go ahead and hit stop recording and